Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Welcome back. Today is day three, and we're talking about how to make at least $100,000 in the first 100 days of 2024. And Julie, before you get to point number six, and we're going through all the lead generation ideas right now, things you should consider, do listen to the previous podcasts we did on this topic, or actually the two previous podcasts, mm -hmm. because they're going to be taking you through other things you should be doing urgently. But the thing all of you should have had done by now, frankly, is your real estate treasure map. And that is your fill in the blank business plan. It's really your fill in the blank business and life plan. And let me tell you what this thing is. And by the way, it's free. It's 60 some pages of essentially all the information you're going to want to have in order to set a business and life plan into action for 2024. So a goal is a dream with an action plan. A lot of people write down goals, but they never create action plans. And when you do the real estate treasure map, it's going to walk you through all the steps to not just create the goal, but to create the action plan as well. This is important because as all of you will, you know, I think unfortunately have experienced, a lot of people set lofty goals for themselves at the start of the year. And usually by April or May, they've just forgotten about whatever their, their goals were and they just fallen back into old patterns. It is not impossible, but it is a constant challenge to uh, learn new habits and, new, and put new systems in your life. But it all starts with having a plan. So right now, while you're thinking about it, scroll down below and click the link to join Premier Coaching. And when you do, we're going to give you the real estate treasure map and you get that for free in the first level. Print that off. Make sure you, you don't have a lot of paper because like I said, it's 60 some pages and then do the real estate treasure map with your spouse, your partner, even if with your kids. So setting family goals is what Julie and I do. Setting family goals makes a huge impact on frankly, whether or not those goals will actually uh, mm -hmm. you know be accomplished or not. If you're just setting goals and you're not bringing the, your other family members into it, chances are they're not going to know why mom or dad are working so, you know, so much on so many weekends. They're just going to feel pissed off because you're missing, you know, another ballet practice or whatever. So just keep that in mind. So go ahead and scroll down below, click the link to join Premier Coaching or just go to premiercoaching.com. Either way, it's going to get you to the same place. Remember, the first month of Premier Coaching is completely free. It'll help you to build momentum into 2024. And yes, that does include a daily semi-private coaching call with a Harris certified coach. That's right. And they get that treasure map right away as soon as you sign up. So don't delay. Again, Tim said it, we are talking about part three, how to make at least 100,000 in the first 100 days of 2024. Adjust accordingly. Some of you that have been in business for a while and have been doing a great job in the previous year are already on track to do that. So consider doubling it, considering upping that goal if that's you. I had a call today with a very nice lady who I've never spoken to yes. before. Her name was Lori. Hi, hi, Lori. I know you're a listener. She was, you know, very organized and um, she was in um, Marin County, out, you know, San Francisco oh. area. Mm -hmm. And she'd just taken two listings and she was really, you know, frankly, I love talking with people that are really experienced because they've been up and down the mountain a few times, mm -hmm. not just necessarily in business, but in life. And so they're not, she needed some direction on what she should be doing with regards to her small brokerage, with regards to her team, because she was worried about the commission sharing lawsuits. But it was so refreshing to know, uh, to have, you know, to really have a long conversation with someone who is absolutely going to make 2024 her best year ever. And you could tell that based on the fact she's already taking listings into the new year. There you go. That is a great example of somebody who is poised to take on the new year. So, and a great example of somebody who's not saying, oh, well, it's the holidays. I'm going to wait for the year to flip. I'm going to wait till the spring. Wait, wait, wait. So that's, that's the kudos main, to her. But that's the main thing. That's the reason you guys should all have your treasure map done by now. Don't make the mistake that everybody makes and just deciding to get it done in January. Do it. Look, I mean, you're going to have a couple weeks really from the 18th to arguably the first of the year where you're not really going to have a heck of a lot going on. Get the treasure map done. Have some fun doing it. All right. So Julie, let's yes. get to point number six. And these are sources that uh, you guys could consider using. And we're doing... Uh, we did uh, the first three uh, the other day, or yesterday, actually, as far as sp uh, spokes or sources mm -hmm. for you to earn 100,000 uh, at least in the first 100 days. And this is point number six. That's right. Point number six, it should not surprise you that in order to make 100,000 at least in your first 100 days, you'll have to lead with lead generation. So lead generation number six for rent by owners, investors who own single family or small multifamily units are an amazing source of new listings for you. 
This is one of the easiest scripts to learn because it's a business script and polish because it's, again, a simple business conversation. If the home is vacant and for rent, might the owner rather sell it versus continuing to keep it as a rental? Offer to do a free comparative market analysis, a CMA, so that they can make an educated decision <clears throat> Excuse me, and see what that does to their plans. Again, potentially one contact and multiple transactions, they may own multiple rental properties. Maybe they want to reinvest in different properties with you. Maybe they want to cash out their entire portfolio while prices are high. You won't know if you don't ask. You'll also love this source because the phone numbers are easy to get. And in some cases, it may be a great decision for some of your wayward buyers where you haven't found any inventory for them. And remember, we're big fans of you guys also um, reaching out to folks that are short-term rental types of RBOs. We talked about that the other day. But in some markets, those are an absolute gold mine. Mm -hmm. And just you know, some advanced coaching. When you're calling uh, a landlord and they've got one rental property, that's a reluctant landlord. They probably ended up with that property and love to get rid of it. Maybe they couldn't sell it in time. Maybe at the time they owed too much. Maybe they inherited it. You COVID just don't, buy. Exactly. Like COVID buy, right. Something like that. So if you come across a landlord with one property, they're probably going to be very motivated to sell it. You come across a landlord that's got 10 or 12 properties, they might be ready to upgrade the properties that they have. Um, but you're going to have to be ready to have really, frankly, very fluid conversations with them about value so they can essentially uh, decide how they're going to upgrade and uh, maybe do a 1031. That's right. And a lot of our coaching clients really love for rent by owners because it is a shorter conversation and it is generally a less emotional, more, um, you know, dollars and cents based. It's simply a business decision. Is the house giving you the returns that you need? Um, Maybe there's a better place to park your money. It's an Fairly easy conversation. So a lot of our coaching clients have done very well with. Now, point number those. seven is perhaps one of our favorite sources of business, just because it's going to be such a killer source of business for probably at least the next decade. Julie, what is point number seven? Number seven, small and medium-sized builders who are building homes on spec. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. Building on spec, spec stands for speculation. The builders are building, speculating that they will indeed sell that home. Now, if you're one of those builders, you don't want that to take forever, do you? So this means they're speculating and they could need to talk to you. There are many iterations of this, all of which we teach in Premier Coaching. But what's working for our clients lately is to identify buildable lots, take them to the small builder. That's another version of this. You sell the lot and list the spec home, often bringing the buyer as well. Now, that's the advanced version of this. Some builders already have spec homes in the inventory. You don't have to list all of them. You don't have to become their build rep. Maybe you just list one of those spec homes to get your feet wet, get their trust, and then that builds into a bigger relationship. Reference the podcast we've done in the last six months on working with new builders, or if you're in premier coaching, you obviously have a lot more in-depth plans and systems for going after new construction, Mm -hmm. new builders to have relationships with them. So uh, yeah, that's your move forward with that plan. But new construction in many markets, the small and medium-sized ones, we like those because generally speaking, they're going to be more than happy to send you listing referrals of their buyers that are building with them that have houses Mm -hmm. to sell. Whereas the new... the larger builders, they might already have existing relationships with um, other agents. Well, even if they do, make sure you're asking for, you know, you know, I understand you list all your resales with Bob when they come up, but let me ask you, is there anything that Bob's had for sale for a while that maybe it's time for you to consider uh, referring to another agent, that type of thing? That's the way a lot of REO relationships worked back in the day. Yep. Um, but if someone, if a new construction build rep is facing down the barrel of having five or six new construction homes that are about to finish that the buyer will not be able to close on until their existing home is sold and they've been referring all these listings to a specific agent that's not getting the job done, it should be very easy for you to at least have your, you know, throw your hat in the ring for consideration. Yes, very well said. All right, point number eight, flippers. Well, sure, they might sell the home on their own, refer to the previous for sale by owner point, but flippers often will list with you so you can bring a buyer to them before they're actually finished with the flip. This is especially important today because some of them have the pressure of higher uh, interest rate loans coming up. Right. This helps them uh, when you list and get this done before they're actually done. It helps them because they can flip more homes in less time, a bird in hand, so to speak. Meanwhile, while you have it listed and they're finishing it, the house generates more and more buyer and seller business for you and potential business for them as well. It's a win-win for everyone. All right, special notice. Julie uh, and I were talking this morning. 
We do, if you listen to our prediction show from last Friday, we have every reason to believe, and we're finding more reasons to believe, that interest rates are going to go down substantially next year, even maybe possibly into the fives. That means you can buy down the rate and get it into the fours, but who knows where they're actually going to fall. But we do know that they're going to fall. So Julie listened to something, a podcast, where the mortgage loan officer is giving great advice with regards to people getting pre-approved mm, now yes. so they could avoid the rush of getting pre-approved when the rates actually fall. So you can give details. Now, when you're making your contacts to your centers of influence and past clients or talking to anybody in general, heed the advice Julie's about to give you. Yes, that's right. And they, uh, what I was listening to, they cited several different sources. UBS was one. I think Forbes was another one. Several banks, okay? Who, J.P. Morgan said it J.P. Too. Morgan, who they had a range of predicting rates would come down anywhere between one point in 2024 and a second point lower in 2025, which would get us into the fives. Some of them were a bit more aggressive on that, up to, one of them said, uh, two and three quarters points uh, falling just in 2024. So that would also get us into the fives. Regardless, we already know just from when rates went from 8.1 down to, you know, gradually over several weeks to what we're at now, which is about 7.2, that we have had week over week of positive mortgage applications, even during the holidays, even during the winter. So imagine what will happen when we get into the sixes. So your point and the point I heard this morning is, if you know that you want to buy, or you, the agent, knows some of your buyers have been on the sidelines waiting for rates to come down. Or even, would, se or even sellers sell that are planning on listing in the spring, and right. the sellers are, you know, you need to get them started on their loan applications now. Yes, because if we're already seeing an increase of applications when we're just in the sevens, imagine what's going to happen when we drop below seven and then maybe below six and a half. So what that will cause obviously, is potential reheating of bidding wars and prices going up. So wouldn't you rather be a buyer before you have to get back into that bidding war, um, guaranteed appraisal situation, waiving the inspection, and competing against everybody else? You would rather do that and then take advantage of the free refi um, offers that those same lenders have. Buy the house now and then refi later. Yeah, you know, it's funny. There will be bidding wars again next year for sure. Well, until inventory recovers which is not predicted to happen anytime soon. Yes, we will have more inventory naturally because of rates going down, but that doesn't mean that we're all of a sudden going to wake up with the million homes plus that we need to even get anywhere near a balanced market. So yes, I would expect that. Thank you for bringing that up. Point number nine is probate. Now, all of you in Premier Coaching, de definitely go to the section in Premier Coaching that's all about probate. And those of you who are listening in the podcast, remember, uh, you're listening on YouTube or whatever, the notes for today's show are down below. So open up show description and you can see all the notes. Use those for your own education. And also there's a link for alltheleads.com and there's a link that gives you a $150 discount. Julie, what is alltheleads.com? Okay, alltheleads.com is your source for probate information, properties, property owners who inherited the properties, phone numbers, contacts, all of that kind of thing. So let me let me introduce that but, first. But the links, the link to join, all, to subscribe to all the leads for that information is down below. Yes. Click that link because I think it's one hundred and fifty dollars. It might even be like a three hundred dollar discount. I believe so, and I also believe they are probably the best at that. For sure. Yeah. So probate. We, we're just talking about how to get you the information. What is it? Not many agents prospect probate leads simply because they don't understand it. Probate is the process of selling a home after someone passes away. The court appoints an executor of the estate who can then sell the property. If keeping the home in the family is not an option and the executor or executors wish to cash it out, that's a listing, a motivated listing. Sometimes they'll reinvest the proceeds in real estate. Sometimes it's just the listing that you'll sell. But either way, they need somebody caring and competent to get the job done and you need listings. So point number 10, and again, uh, alltheleads.com slash Harris for, well, pr for don't, probate leads. Don't bounce off probate yeah. yet. There are people that we have coached that are in our you know premier coaching programs who all they do is work probate. Yes. Pro probate is actually a fantastic niche if you're willing to do the initial work to get the relationship with the attorneys. You've coached people like that too. That's right. It's really a fantastic spoke. And I think um, mainly, primarily because the first thing that I said when we were introducing this is that you don't have much competition. Not very many agents even know what it is, how it works, much less how to do it or build those relationships. And again, here's one of the reasons we like probate as a lead generator. It's kind of similar to working with builders uh, because it's one relationship, right? You have one relationship with a probate attorney. They have probate business coming in all the time. 
So you have that relationship and then you have potentially multiple listings. What if you had five probate attorneys? Didn't one of our coaches, Bill Burden in Marin mm-hmm. County, wasn't he getting a lot from probate? He does great with probate. And he had like, what, three or four probate attorney relationships yep. and they fed That's him right. listings constantly? Exactly. Right. So if you, you have to have a certain temperament, I think. You're going to have to be somebody that the attorneys are going to work with, frankly. And be patient. And be patient and be very professional. And we, you know, obviously tell you guys how to do all this inside Premier Coaching, the link to join Premier Coaching is below, or you can just go to premiercoaching.com. Julie, point number 10. Yes, point number 10, your professional center of influence. When was the last time your favorite lender sent you leads, or even better, pre-qualified or pre-approved or loan committed leads? When have you asked? Who do you who do they know who's getting pre-qualified right now to buy and has a home to sell? Stagers are also great to know. We're talking about your professional center of influence because smart sellers, you know, the ones that you want to list, call a stager first. Refer business to stagers and ask for leads in exchange. Auctioneers are a great source of business. Yes. Um, again, it, depending on your community, auctions might be auctioneering off the you know the home contents and things like that. You know, this is a funny one too. In very expensive areas, believe it or not, high-end consignment stores oh, yeah. are a killer source of listing leads, which is hilarious to think about. But it's true. Because if you know someone's downsizing a property or they're getting rid of furniture mm-hmm. or just all the normal you know things that happen in life, they're going and they have expensive stuff. That's going to high end consignment. That high end consignment lady can be a killer source of business for you. Yeah. It just goes on from there. But the moral of the story is make these direct contacts. So Julie, yes, there's people out there that are listening right now mm-hmm. that are a little bit. Let's just you know they're a little complacent right now. They're not really focused. They're not really drilled down. What can you say to them right now to really get them motivated to take action at the very least in getting the real estate treasure map done, ideally following the show uh, suggestions for the last couple of days? Well, definitely you said it first, you've got to have a plan. Can't follow a plan if you don't have one. So get the real estate treasure map. Don't just print it. Some of you print it and then it's in your desk for a year. Don't just print it and fill it out. You have to actually follow it. It talks about your current financial picture. It has you do personal financial projections And it asks you questions like, what is real estate supposed to accomplish for you? What do you have to earn in real estate? And then you do some goal setting. What would be super fantastic and totally move the needle for you? What do you then have to earn in real estate? And then we figure out how are you going to actually do it? How many transactions based on your average net commission to you will you have to do to meet or exceed those goals? Now, the amazing thing, and and to answer your question, of course, the treasure map is a great place to start. Some of them listening already have a working treasure map. Certainly our coaching clients and our coaches who listen all the time have that treasure map. So I think sometimes when you're looking at a plan like this, 100,000, at least 100,000 in 100 days, that can seem maybe intimidating, especially since we're giving them 12 points, you know, different lead generation. But you got to realize to make 100,000, most of you only need to do 10 to 12 deals, okay? So don't think about this as this massive project. The best thing that you can do is take the first step. It's, you know, there's a lot of quotes about you don't have to see the top of the ladder. You just have to to climb the first rung and then put one foot in front of the other. You've got to get on that ladder first in order to start climbing. So maybe what you do is you look at one of these things. We're presenting two, two more tomorrow and then we're concluding and summarizing. So maybe you take one or two that you're already great at. I would say number one from the previous podcast, your past client's center of influence. Most of you are comfortable with that. Even if you're new to real estate, you still have friends and family. You're probably seeing them during the holidays. Get comfortable talking about real estate, asking who do they know who could use your help. Well, Break remember, the ice is my point. And the shows previous leading up to yesterday's show and this really this week's shows, we're all about giving you guys information so you can feel comfortable. Knowledge equals confidence. Ignorance equals fear. Talking points. Exactly. Talking points. Guys, there's 5,000 past podcasts that you can be listening to. <laughs> At least 5,000. No excuses. So, Exactly. No excuses. So if you're looking for a direction, well, here's a suggestion for you. Get our book, Harris Rules. That's going to, you know, it's one of the best selling real estate books of all time, which is fantastic. Of course, it's available at Barnes and Noble and all the online booksellers you can imagine. Um, But the very important action step you should be taking now is not waiting until the calendar flips to 2024. That is a huge mistake. At least get a 30 day advance on the new year. And look, Julie and I are from Columbus, Ohio. Trust me when I tell you, it was very hard to be motivated when it's the you know the clouds are so thick you haven't seen you know the sun in a day it feels like there's 15 minutes of daylight and it's sleeting exactly it's <laughs> sleeting and there's ice everywhere it's super hard to be motivated all you want to do is basically stay in your house and light the fireplace i get it well turn that complacency and that sort of seasonal 
laziness, if you want to call it what it is, into something that is going to pay dividends, you know, in the next few months. And that's going to be following your real estate treasure map, doing the other things we suggest that you do. And notice the recurring theme of everything Julie and I suggest that you do. They don't cost a lot of money. We're not asking you to go buy leads. We're not asking you to spend a bunch of money on branding and marketing. We're not asking you to do things that may not ever pay off or even are remotely speculative. Don't do stuff like that in this market, guys. Do the things that you know are going to put you in a position to help the most amount of people buy or sell real estate You know, in at least 90 days or less. Yes. And so concentrate on making maybe a bite-sized piece. Like, was it Lori you talked to earlier? I think mm-hmm. it was her yeah. name. Yeah. Okay. So she's a great example. She already has two listings. So if you listeners well, don't already have X number of listings, decide you're going to take one in the next 10 days or less. It's important to point out two listings that are, I didn't ask her, but I know that community. I know the area where she sells. They're at least $2 million each. Well, that doesn't hurt either. Okay. <laughs> right. But adjust accordingly to your goals, right? So if you're getting intimidated and you go, oh my gosh, you know, I did the math and I've got to do 12 deals to make 100,000 in 100 days. Well, start with the first two and it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah, that's it. So guys, listen, we're going to summarize tomorrow. So make sure you listen. Thanks for keeping this number one. Listen to daily podcast real estate professionals in at least the United States. If you're looking for the perfect stocking stuffer for Julie and I, <laughs> and I know a lot of you are like, oh my gosh, what am I going to get for Tim and Julie this year for Christmas? It's a great question. Yeah, it is. All of you should be asking that, by the way. There's tens of thousands of you that listen to us every day. <laughs> this podcast is going to have over 3 million downloads this year alone. It's had over 20 million downloads. And you, it is time for you to get in the holiday spirit and give your favorite podcast host a present. And here's what it is. A five-star review on iTunes and a comment about why you love the podcast. It takes you five seconds to do it, and it does really uh, – frankly, we love the reviews, obviously, especially the five-star ones. And it helps uh, to let iTunes know and really all the other podcast listing widgets uh, know that this is a great podcast that they then – you know, the widgets will start sharing the podcast with other potential agents that could use our help. We certainly appreciate your continued support. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.